It has been many moons since I've seen sales like this. Hey, my thrifty friends, what is up? Tabs here from the Urban Goddess Shop. Welcome back to my channel. Today's video is a what sold and sales have been so crazy. We're gonna talk numbers after, but I think you're gonna see the proof in the pudding here as we go through these sales. So if you're new to my channel, I am a Canadian reseller and I sell majority of my items on Poshmark. I do list on eBay, Etsy, Facebook Marketplace. Majority of my sales are on Poshmark. Without any further ado, I don't like to waste your time. We're gonna jump into these sales. So today we have 18 sales over $40. 18 sales over $40. It has been many moons. <laughs> I don't even know what other term to use. It has been many moons since I've seen sales like this. So of course, I'm super excited to do this video and kind of go over them with you. First item is an anthropology quilted puff sleeve jacket in a size petite small. This sold for $104. And I don't know if you guys remember, but I just talked about this in a video. He actually requested a few additional measurements. I include measurements in my listings, but um, she wanted shoulder to shoulder, which I have to start including in jackets because I don't actually do it right now. And then she also wanted like top of shoulder to bottom of armpit, which I thought was justifiable. She said she was broad shoulder. She said she had a few concerns. I actually tried the jacket on myself and told her that I am a large and the jacket fit me very nicely. That was it. Like the sale happened. And the funny thing is like, how often does that actually happen? Like how often do you give additional measurements and they buy the item? One out of 10. I'm going to even say like one out of 20, but whatever. I do go the extra mile. If someone has specific questions, I do do my best if I'm at home to do the measurements. Sometimes we're just away and I forget and I'm just, yeah, not very good at doing that. Moving along, next sale is a $250 bundle and this went to Callista. Callista and I have been friends on Instagram for a long time. She has bought many bundles from me. Callista, I love you, girl. Thank you so much for always supporting my business, my channel, my store, like everything, like just... Thank you so much. She got a fabulous bundle and it was a couple days after the long weekend and I saw her kind of liking the items and I was like, you know what? She's a repeat buyer. I just adore her. So I was like, you know what? I'm going to give you the long weekend sale, even though I'm still not doing it. And she was like, thank you so much. And she put together this bundle. So four pieces. First is a Lululemon black insulated men's jacket. This was in a size medium. Second item is an Anthropology Pilcro cowl neck sweater in a size large, and this is a Numa Tags item. Next is a Lululemon navy blue technical men's jacket in a size large, which Jeff tried on. He just didn't really like the style, but it was a, a great jacket. And the last item is a pair of Birkenstock Gaza thong sandals in a women's size eight. And all of these items, except for that Lulu jacket, that first men's jacket, I just listed within the last week or two. So pretty quick sales, quick flips fantastic pieces, all in great condition. i uh, happy that it went out to her. Thank you. I just want to throw it out there. Thank you so much. Next is another bundle. This was a three-piece bundle. It sold for $110. There's actually an issue in this bundle and there was a case opened and it was my fault and I'll discuss it after I go through the items. So first is a handmade earthy tone pullover fleece sweater in a size XL. Super cute. I actually thrifted it for myself, but I run hot. I always run really hot. So I put it on and I was like, there's no way I'm going to be able to wear this through a day. I will literally lose. 10 pounds from sweating. Next is a Royal Robins fleece pullover hooded sweater. This was a wool blend and it was in a size XL. And then the third item is a very recently thrifted L.L. Bean oversized gray crew neck sweater. And this was in an XL as well. Just to recap, $110 for the three pieces. Um, the error that I made was I actually had two Royal Robin fleece pullover hoodies. Like what are the odds? Both are the same color even. And this is a new to me brand. I like it cause it's kind of like an outdoor brand. It's not a very expensive brand, but I really like their pieces and I feel like they kind of fit into the color palette and you know, just my demographic or my avatar of person that I'm shopping for. Anyways, I have two exact same color. One is a medium, one is an XL, and I accidentally shipped the X or the medium to hers. As soon as the case opened, I was like, 
I know it was in good condition. And then I looked and she was like wrong size. And I was like, what? No. And then I looked through my listings and I was like, oh my gosh, I totally forgot I had two of these. So my bad. I actually put a request into the case that Posh sent me, send me a new shipping label and that I would mail her the proper sweater to her and that she could keep the other one because I was like, they're at whatever. I'm just asking for a lot for them to give me a shipping label. <laughs> they graciously did. They also did include in the email that I should pay close attention when I'm shipping to be sure that I'm not making these mistakes. But like, listen, I've shipped over 3000 items on Poshmark. I've had maybe like 10 errors. And I know that probably sounds like a lot, I feel like it's not a lot considering how much I've sold because my inventory system is pretty rock solid. <laughs> it's just my bad. I was in a rush. Next is an Aritzia Wilfred Montpellier relaxed fit off-white sweater. And this was in an extra small. It sold for $84. I have had this listed for a couple weeks. I think if you have knit sweaters, you need to get them listed. People are shopping for them. Now is the time catch everyone as they're trying to get these items new into their closet. The further we get in winter, yes, you'll continue to sell sweaters, but I just feel like people want more deals the further we get into winter. If you have them, get them listed. People are buying them. I think this was a fantastic sale. The actual retail price on that sweater was like $148. So I think I listed it at 110 or 120 and my automation sent her an offer, which she accepted. I kind of priced to allow for that. Next is a Lululemon Extra Mile Half Zip. I think it's like a heathered long sleeve. This was in a size two and it sold for $40. I did have it listed higher. She sent me an offer. I'm kind of like wanting to move stuff through my closet as I have a bunch of great items to list. Making money, meeting my profit range. I'm going to let the item go right now. Next is another Lulu piece. I actually sold a lot of Lulu pieces where I felt like it was kind of dry for Lulu in August. And I was like, is Lulu still a thing? Are people still buying Lulu? They are, they are. And actually I just saw something. Here's an interesting fact. I just saw something, it was like a news article that there was like three companies that claimed increase in profits where a lot of companies they're down from the previous years. Lulu was one of them their sales are like increasing every year. So they're figuring out that secret sauce. I think knowing what's trending for Lulu, the styles, the colors, even the vintage stuff um, will really play into making sales. And then obviously making sure you're picking up really good quality stuff. If your Lulu looks like it was dragged out of the garbage can and rolled on the ground, that's probably why you're having trouble selling it. But I think there are lots of pieces that are like in great condition that are slow, slow movers. I've had a bunch of slow movers. The other thing that I've noticed is that my larger sizes tend to go quicker. I have a pile of size twos that I can't give away. So I'm just going to hold on to them, hoping that they're just like those slow, slow burners. But this next is a pair of Lululemon Black Studio Pants. They sold for $55.00. They were in a size small, they were an older style, the size dot in the pocket had fallen off. So I had no way of really sizing them to like with the number sizing. So I just kind of went by measurements and picked a letter. And I actually do that often. I'll uh, refer to their website and find out what the sizing is for different ones. And then I'll kind of make an estimate of what size it is. So you don't have to have like a size strip. The other thing that sometimes I'll do is I'll go look at the stock photos and I'll see how the item is supposed to fit uh, on someone and then I will like kind of imagine like hey how would this fit on someone small or someone medium and I'll size it that way by just looking at the stock photo and how it should fit on certain sizes right. Next up is a red floral quilted long coat in a size medium and it sold for $75. I have had this coat I don't know, since last winter, like maybe February, March, maybe even January, I don't know, since last winter. And I thought for sure it was going to sell last winter. It didn't. I had sent a ton of aggressive offers. So I think for this one, I was just waiting for the right person that wanted this color and enjoyed the pattern and things like that. But Honestly, I thought this was going to be a really quick sell. This wasn't really like a vintage grandma style one. Um, it was kind of like a remake one and maybe that had to do with it too. I'm not really sure. But yeah, I will use caution when I'm grabbing quilted coats going forward. Next is a pair of Mother the Stunner Ankle Fray 
jeans in a size 26. These sold for $50. I've had them for quite a while, but I picked up two pairs on like steal of a deal, probably like seven or eight dollars. I think I had them listed a little bit high. So I was just kind of waiting and hoping. I did send out a bunch of offers for 40, I think it was 40% off. And I even sent 50% offers on a bunch of my really high price ticket items that I've had for more than three or four months. And she, she bit, she bit the hook. She, she wanted these ones. A lot of these items are selling for that 50 and up price point. Next is an Anthropology Maeve Camilla Drop Hem dress. This was in a size extra small. I think it was also a linen blend. I paid up for this item. I think I paid like 25 to $30. So the profit on this is like a couple bucks. I did not make very much money and I don't think I would pick up something like this again. I kind of envision what this style and why it didn't sell and then I don't think I would pay up. So if I found this item for like under $10, I'd probably grab it again. But for what I paid, I will be more cautious on those items now. Moving along, next is an Aritzia Wilfred Durant jacket. This is like a floral print. It was in a size large and it sold for $60. I thrifted this uh, probably like a month ago and I paid like $10 for it. I was actually going to save this. I kind of had like a collection of items that I was like, okay, I'm gonna do a whatnot sale and I'm gonna save this item for that whatnot sale because I felt like my cost of goods was like kind of lower compared to what I pay for some other items. But I'm happy I didn't. Like I'm happy I just kind of bit the bullet and listed it. And this is my conundrum with whatnot. Yes, I can make a bunch of sales in one day and probably sell for less, but then what about items like this? Like there's no way I would have got $60 on whatnot for this. And it was also missing the belt. Like there is just no way. I don't know. I'm like kind of on the fence of what to do with whatnot. Um, I feel like most of my items have a pretty high turnover anyway. So it's not like I'm getting things and I'm sitting on them for months and months. I mean, some things I do, but a lot of items that I would probably put onto whatnot tend to sell relatively quick on Poshmark and for probably double of what I would get on whatnot, maybe even more. Like, I don't even know what this would sell, but yeah, this is definitely that dilemma that I have. And this is like a perfect example of something that I was gonna save for whatnot and then ended up listing. All right, we're gonna keep moving along. Next is an Aritzia Wilfred Free Bianca Green Knit sweater dress. It's in a size small. It sold for $59. This just had all the fall vibes in it. And again, it's knit, making sure my knits are getting listed right now. Next is a Lululemon Sit and Lotus black merino wool long sleeve. This one sold for $40 and it was in a size four. I've been accepting some offers on these Lululemon tops. I got really good deals on them when I bought them. I just don't know if they're meeting that profit range. I mean, maybe I'm accepting lower offers than I should. I think I think I need to start steering away from them. I mean, they're good items and a sale is a sale and you know, 15 or $20, but I don't know. I don't know if I'm gonna keep picking up the knit sweaters. I do have a couple that are gonna get listed this week. Now that I'm seeing these sales come through, I don't know if I'm going to be sourcing them unless they're like, you know, under $10, but I don't find that very often. Next is a pair of Aritzia Wilfred tie front pants. These are a tapered leg in a size four. They sold for $55. I think if these would have been a bigger size, they would have sold for more, but there's just so many of these pants on Poshmark right now. Bigger sizes, yes. I'm still making money, meeting that profit range, but I, I would love to get some more like size 8, 10, 12 pants in my closet. More like the average size, I guess. That I would say a size 4 is, is quite small. Next up is another bundle. This is a two-piece bundle and it's sold for $105. In it is a Ritzia sweater dress in a size small. And the second item is an Aritzia Wilfred black knit long sleeve dress in a size medium. Both of these pieces, Aritzia, those are like no brainers for me. Like if I can get good condition Aritzia, whether it's Wilfred or Babaton, and it's like generally current, I'm gonna say within five years, some things may be older that I will grab, but they're more like probably a neutral tone or a classic style or like a certain material content. Generally, 
I'll source them again if the cost of goods is reasonable. All right, moving along. Next sale is a pair of Lit Foot white leather lace-up sneakers. These were in a size nine and they sold for $40. I thrifted these, I don't know, back in spring and I actually went thrifting with Jeff and there was two pairs. There was these and a pair in teal and Jeff was like, grab those, grab those. They're leather shoes. Those will sell good. The teal pair sold really well and I want to say they sold for over $60, but the white pair, I don't know, they just didn't look as crisp as the teal pair. So I think that's why they took a little bit longer and then they also sold for a little bit less. Next is a pair of Lululemon on the fly 7 8 pants. These were in black in a size 6 and they sold for $55. A little bit lower than I think I was hoping for. She sent me the offer and I have a bunch more stuff to list. I'm making money on them so I'm gonna let these ones go. On the fly pants, I still recommend you list, if you're in Canada, that you're listing them for $85, $80 to $85, and then accept reasonable offers. If you're pricing them at $65, people are almost always going to send you a lower offer. So to try and reduce getting those lower offers for like $40, $45, I would recommend listing a little bit higher and then just being open to reasonable offers, right? Next is a Wilfred free sweater. This is gray merino wool in a size extra small. It sold for $40. I did have it listed probably at 75 and at some point had sent out some aggressive offers. This person didn't buy it the day I sent out the offer and it was probably like a week ago. She actually messaged me and was like, would you still honor that price. Now, I don't know if you guys notice this, but if you send someone an offer and they decline it, which she declined it, and then they change their mind and they want it, it doesn't let me resend the offer. Like that, that part annoys me. So anyways, it was $43 with $9.99 shipping is what the original offer was because it wouldn't let me resend it or I don't know, I couldn't figure out how to resend it. I had her just send me an offer for 40, which, you know, works out to the same thing. She's going to pay full price shipping but she's gonna save $3 on the purchase price. Do you guys have a workaround for that? If you do, let me know, cause I've had it happen a couple times in the last few weeks. And then the last item this week is a Lululemon black biker shorts, 10 inch in a size eight. These were actually, I think they were like Lulu flare leg pants, like from probably 2012. You could take in your old flare leg pants to Lulu and they would turn them into biker shorts. Like I did hear they were doing that or they were also repurposing things that they had like old dead stock into more current style. So I don't know how these came about, but they were, I would say they were definitely hemmed by Lulu, by their seamstresses, just by the hem and the finish and everything. They sold for $50. I just listed these a couple days ago. So really, really quick sale. Shorts in September. Like I I have a couple pairs of shorts and I was actually gonna start holding on to them for next year. And now I'm like, mm, maybe I should list these. Maybe I should get these all listed because you just, you never know, right? You never know. Someone might be looking for shorts. Okay, so let's go over what my thoughts are. Oh, it's quite a mess back there. That's embarrassing. I like strategically had the camera placed so you guys couldn't see. I have been working really hard on my sourcing, finding brands, um, trends, styles, things that are currently selling. I've told you guys this before. I go through solds. Like I'll pick sweaters and I'll sort solds and I'll sort them also by price and do like fifty to one hundred and fifty dollars. And I'm looking at the colors, the brands, the styles, the trends, everything that's selling in that price point because that's the price point ultimately that I want to be in is that fifty dollar and up. This will give me a good idea when I'm going out sourcing what I should be looking for. I have a lot of stuff coming out really soon that isn't necessarily brand but is more on style where there is a lot of brand stuff in this what sold. I also haven't been listing as much vintage and unique stuff over the summer partly because my thrift store doesn't put out sweaters and that's like that's where I like to be. So now that the sweaters are back out I'm going to start sourcing in there again and finding those unique quirky vintage sweaters. The other thing that I've been doing is upping my listings. I've been 
doing that minimum 50 listings a week. So this week, I actually haven't listed anything because I've been working the last three days. I am going to knock out my 50 listings between Thursday and Friday. So that's tomorrow and Friday. I think that also plays into having so many consistent sales. So I'm going to let you guys in on something. And I don't typically talk about numbers because I feel like you have to give like full transparency when you start to give numbers. But my sales for the month of September, and today is the 14th, my gross sales are 2600 like just over, I think like $2,613 or something as of recording this video. That is, that is really good. Like I haven't had these sales in months, in months, like probably since before they started doing all that A-B testing and stuff. I feel like sales are starting to pick up, but I'm also listing like a crazy person. Like I, I 50 listings for someone that only lists two days a week, like that's a lot. So yeah, I do think that's carrying over. And then I would say my average cost of goods, if I think of the last two weeks is probably between three and $400 a week. So yeah, you can do the math there. Um, minus my cost of goods, minus Poshmark fees. I feel like that's still some good money coming into my business and for working two days a week on it. That's kind of what I'm doing. Um, I've been sending my most aggressive offers out on Fridays and Sundays, sometimes on Wednesdays, but I feel like those days, like in the evening tend to be the busiest days for me. That's when I notice the most likes. Um, but say it was like a Thursday and all of a sudden I noticed there's like a bunch of likes coming on my phone that evening. I'll actually hop on and do like send offers on a bunch of my items, whether I do like my, you know, whole closet or maybe I sort my closet and do certain items I will actually start sending out some aggressive offers because it means people are on the app they're thinking about shopping they're looking at items and I want to catch them in that moment yeah Fridays and Sundays definitely when I send out I also received a question not too long ago if I participate in closet clear out and that they don't hear me talk about it very often I don't anymore I used to I don't, I am not marking down my prices. I know there's like the Becky Park method, which is where you send them a message saying, if you're interested, I'll drop the price. I tried doing that over the summer a couple times and I had people that were like, yeah, for sure. And I dropped the price, they never bought it. And then I just felt burnt and I was like, I'm not even doing this. I just send out my generic message, bundle, save, whatever sale I'm running um, at the time, whether it's 25%, 30%, and then long weekends, I'm probably running a bundle and save 40% just to kind of push through some inventory on those long weekends. But yeah, that's what I'm doing. This is all like my own perceptions. It's not necessarily like lay down in stone or these are rules, but these are things that I'm doing and that I feel like are working, but I'd love to know what's working for you guys. Okay. So I have some questions. Number one, do you have certain day, days that you send out aggressive offers? Is there certain days where you're like, I always do the most activity on this day? Next, do you participate in closet clear out? What method do you use and how do you find your experience? And then number three, I want you just to shout out any crazy sales you've had because I would love to know if there's a new brand you found or like a style that you discovered or a keyword. I wanna hear some new keywords because I'm always looking to use them. But yeah, those are my three questions. Answer any of them, but I love to hear from you guys and have your input. Thank you so much for watching and supporting my channel. And if you're new, welcome to my YouTube channel. I will see you guys next time. Okay, gotta wish you many sales. Bye. <laughs> the doorstep, finally home. I've been